A huge storm system is coming to the United States over the next few days, and this is about to bring the coldest weather that we've seen in months for much of the United States. Severe weather is actually going to be making a return as well, with isolated tornadoes even being a possibility. And lastly, the tropics are heating up very quickly as we now have a Category 4 hurricane in the Pacific Ocean that is moving towards Hawaii, and we also have another hurricane that could form in the Atlantic Ocean over the next few days. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that'll be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And you'll notice right across the Great Lakes region, we have a very intense low pressure system that is currently coming out of Canada. And we are beginning to see our first signs of cold weather moving into the northern plains. And this powerful low pressure system is about to bring very cold weather, including the potential for freezing temperatures and even some isolated snowfall for parts of the northern plains, the Midwest, and back into the Ohio. Ohio Valley and Northeast over the next few days. Additionally, we are monitoring the threat of severe weather today and tomorrow that will extend from Arkansas all the way back into the Northeast. And even a little pocket of isolated funnel clouds and tornadoes is possible today across parts of Minnesota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Nebraska. And we'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. Also back over in the Eastern Pacific Ocean, this right here is a hurricane that is actually sitting just off the coast of the Baja, California. This isn't really expected to impact the United States much. A couple of days ago, it looked like this this might bring a lot of moisture into the southern plains. At this point, it does not appear as if that is going to happen. Instead, it's going to slow down rapidly and weaken as it moves into the Baja, California, and it is unlikely to bring a whole lot of impacts to the United States, but some of the remnant moisture out of this hurricane will likely make it into Texas, which could bring some showers and storms to the weekend and early next week. Now, we have a ton of stuff to talk about in today's forecast, and I want to begin by talking about our weather pattern across the country right now, and this is all steered from our mid and upper level flow in our jet stream and this is what it looks like right now we got this very intense low pressure system just to the north of the Great Lakes with very strong northwesterly flow coming right out of Canada this is extremely rare to see in the month of September I just want to throw that out there we hardly ever see a low pressure system this intense if we ever do it's usually towards the tail end of September so it gives you an idea of the rarity of this hardly ever do we see something like this which is why the weather is about to get very cold over the next 48 hours across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley because all of this very strong mid to upper level flow is coming out of Canada, which is where a very cold pocket of air resides, and that's all going to dive down into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley over the next few days. As we approach the weekend and early next week, that cold weather will continue, especially if you're around the Ohio Valley or Northeast. There will still be some lingering cold weather into early next week for parts of the Midwest and the Northern Plains. Eventually, as we go into early to mid next week, high pressure will begin to build again across the Southern Plains, and this is when things could get a bit more interesting. As we go into the late second week of September and even in the third week of September, there may be an opportunity for one of these low pressure systems over on the West Coast to try to make it over the Rockies. If we were to see something like that, that would at least indicate that there will be some return of severe weather. But this could also go up to the north and more towards Canada and weaken. And if that were to happen, there wouldn't really be much in the way of severe weather. So there's a couple of scenarios that could evolve during the second week of September. However, I do think the warmer weather is going to make a return as high pressure is really going to be building here across the Great Plains. And then beyond this, things could get a little bit interesting when it comes to the tropics. We are going to be keeping an eye on the potential for Gabriel to form in the Atlantic Ocean in just a few days. And we're going to talk more about the possibilities that could evolve with this system in just a few moments. So with this huge storm system, let's talk exactly about how cold it is going to get across the United States. This is what it looks like right now. We got our first shot of cold air that is making its way across the Midwest and the Great Lakes today. Tomorrow, though, we're going to get a reinforcement of cold air that's going to be even colder for parts of the Midwest and including Minnesota, Iowa, and the Dakotas, where temperatures could fall as much as 20 to 30 degrees within the next 24 hours. On Friday, this should be the coldest day of the entire week for most of the northern tier of the United States. Temperatures will fall below average as far south as Texas on Friday. And then by Saturday and Sunday, that cold air will linger across the Great Lakes region before eventually Monday into Tuesday, that cold air will make its way towards the East Coast, where we're going to see a temperature drop, especially across New England. So there will be some nice colder weather in sight, which will be your first feeling of fall, but this is our false fall. We are not going diving into fall right now. We're not going to have winter in two weeks. That's not what's happening here. Unfortunately, if you're looking forward to fall, we are going to deal with warmer weather returning as we go into next week. It looks very likely that above average temperatures are going to make a return across the Great Plains. Could see some cold air linger, though, if you're back over in the Northeast. However, generally speaking, most of the country will be right back to above average temperatures during the middle of September. So here's what the actual temperatures will be over the next few days, beginning with today, which we are 
already have 30s and 40s sitting across the Midwest this morning. You more than likely will need a jacket if you're going out the door. Our cold front is making its way through the Northeast as well. This is our first shot of cold air, which is making it across Pennsylvania, New York. Right near that cold front is where isolated severe weather will be a possibility today. Friday morning is going to be pretty chilly across the Northern Plains in the Midwest, most areas in the 40s. Saturday morning is one of these tricky mornings where we could see some below freezing temperatures try to make an appearance across parts of the Dakotas and especially across northeastern Minnesota. Wouldn't rule out some snow flurries as well if you're back over near Duluth, just to the north of Duluth. A little chance there for a few snow flurries on Saturday. By Sunday and Monday, the temperatures will continue to stay pretty low for most of the Midwest, Great Lakes back through the northeast. Some of that cold air will sink across the southeast, but if you're back down in Florida, not really any relief in sight. This cold front will really only make it down towards central Georgia, central Mississippi, and then any further south than that. Even if the cold front were to make it, it will not feel much different outside. And another thing I want to point out is that this is actually breaking records this morning and tomorrow morning in the United States. These are the forecasted high temperatures for today across the Midwest and the Great Lakes. All the numbers on the map here indicate records. So any of the numbers here are basically record-breaking high low temperatures. Also for Friday, we are expecting even more as far south as Kansas City, which is forecasted to only be 66 degrees tomorrow afternoon. That would make it the coldest high temperature that we've seen on that day on record. So all in all, pretty crazy stuff here. And before we talk more about what this storm is going to bring in terms of significant severe weather and even the tropics heating up, we need to talk more about the sponsor of today's video. Another forecast that might not be so fun to look at is the forecast of growing debt. And that is why today's sponsor, PDS Debt, is here to help. And if I had to use a service like this, my option of choice would be PDS Debt. PDS Debt goes beyond the numbers to help understand your unique financial situation and craft a personalized plan just for you. There's no minimum credit score and they are here to help you save more and pay less. PDS Debt is rated A plus by the Better Business Bureau and has thousands of five star reviews. Whether you are dealing with credit card debt, personal loans, or medical bills, PDS Debt has custom options to help you get out of debt. Freedom from debt could be right around the corner, and PDS Debt is here to help you every step of the way. You are 30 seconds away from being debt-free. Get your free assessment and find the best option for you at pdsdebt.com slash velocity. That's pdsdebt.com slash velocity. pdsdebt.com slash velocity. Now let's get back to the forecast. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is Thursday, where we have a marginal threat of severe weather in place from New York all the way back into Tennessee where isolated damaging winds and hail will be a possibility. I also think there could be a sneaky tornado risk back over in parts of Minnesota, even as far south as Nebraska this afternoon, right around our low pressure systems. So stay weather aware. If any tornadoes were to occur, it would definitely be brief and also weak. So not too concerned about this, but there will likely be at least a few funnel clouds and also the potential for an isolated tornado. As we go into Friday, the threat of severe weather continues across the Ohio Valley and back even as far south as North North Texas near Dallas Fort Worth where a marginal threat of severe weather is in place and the Storm Prediction Center has actually mentioned that there is a chance for a tornado or two across parts of Kentucky, Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, Southern Ohio and even West Virginia. So make sure that you're staying weather aware here. There is a low chance of a live stream tomorrow, so click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. Now let's talk more about the timing of severe weather, beginning with what is happening today. We are expecting an uptick of storms right around lunchtime across parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. Damaging winds will be the biggest concern. Some hail, maybe a brief spin up is a possibility. This should continue till about six to seven o'clock before the storms really start to fizzle out as they move into the Carolinas. Back over in the Northeast, scattered showers and storms will be a possibility throughout the afternoon. Damaging winds being the biggest concern, especially across central New York by around four o'clock. By five to six, these storms are gonna be weakening as they approach New England, and then some scattered showers will be a possibility during the overnight hours tonight into Friday morning across parts of New England. And then our little sneaky tornado risk is going to be across parts of Minnesota, South Dakota, and Northwest Iowa this afternoon. Right around 5 to 6 o'clock is when storms will attempt to fire up. There will be a low chance again of an isolated tornado or two. I know the Storm Prediction Center does not have anything outlined here, but I do think a tornado risk is in play. By 7 to 8 o'clock, those storms will start to weaken. So there's about a 3 to 4 hour window here that we could see an isolated 
isolated tornado risk. So to give you a broader picture of the entire country for the next few days, we're actually going to have a little Fujiwara effect to take place where we have a low pressure system in the northern plains and also one back up into Canada. This one's going to get absorbed into our much stronger low pressure system just north of the Great Lakes on Friday. It really doesn't mean a whole lot, but the winds will be pretty strong across the Midwest and the Great Lakes. By Saturday and Sunday, that low pressure system moves out. Showers and storms will be a possibility along the east coast on Saturday. Sunday and Monday, high pressure builds across the Midwest and really all across the eastern tier of the country. Not really seeing much signs of severe weather making any big return anytime soon. I think if that were to occur, it'd be sometime around the middle or end of September. And then this right here is the potential next hurricane that could form in the Atlantic Ocean, and we're going to talk about that right now. So far, this hurricane season has been fairly quiet, but I do think that'll be changing during the middle and end of September. The National Hurricane Center does have an area outlined right now in the main development region that has a high probability of developing into our next tropical storm, which would be named Gabriel. This is going to be moving off to the west over the next several days. Models have it going anywhere from the Caribbean Sea as far north as even turning out to sea. However, there is a large range of possibilities here that could take place, and it really is going to be a matter of time, I think, until this develops. Once it develops, we'll have a much better idea of where it could go, but right now, it really could go anywhere in the Atlantic Ocean or even towards land. So this right here is the spaghetti charts, basically indicating where this storm system could go over the next couple of weeks, and it kind of gives you an idea right now that there's a lot of possibilities. Some of the models are currently indicating this could go more towards the Caribbean Sea. The vast majority of them do keep it just north of the Lesser and Greater Antilles, but still have it becoming a tropical storm or hurricane by around the middle of next week. Now, notice that there is obviously some uncertainty of where this will go beyond this point. If it were to take a more southerly path, it could go more to the west. It could also turn off to sea like Aaron did. It's very uncertain at this point. There's also a select handful of these ensemble members that bring it further off to the east and have it well out to sea. What I think will likely happen is that this is going to go more to the west. I think it's going to be similar to Aaron, where it's going to track closer to the lesser and greater Antilles. And then beyond that point, we really don't know what's going to happen. But obviously, we'll have to keep an eye on this because it could go towards the United States and the water temperatures are still very warm, very low wind shear. It's a very favorable environment for tropical development. Now, across the Pacific Ocean, we also have some problems right now. We have Hurricane Lorena that is currently heading towards the Baja, California. And then also we have Hurricane Kiko, which has actually become as high as a Category 4 hurricane now. Very intense hurricane in the open Pacific waters. This is actually tracking directly towards Hawaii, though. And I do think that this will be impacting Hawaii. Now, we do have some time until it gets there, but this will at least be a tropical storm, I think, by the time it reaches Hawaii. And this is what Hurricane Kiko looks like right now. It was a very impressive looking Category 4 hurricane late last night. It has begun to weaken a little bit, though, as it continues to track to the west, and it will gradually weaken as it goes towards Hawaii. The biggest reason why is because the water temperatures are colder, but that does not mean we are not going to see impacts in Hawaii. So over the next few days, this hurricane is going to continue to track to the west towards Hawaii. It should maintain hurricane strength at least through Sunday, but by Monday and Tuesday, it will begin to weaken as it approaches Hawaii, but still notice the pressure right around 995 millibars by Monday afternoon as it approaches the far eastern parts of Hawaii. So this is going to likely make some impacts here, including the potential for tropical storm force winds, storm surge, and maybe even some flooding rainfall. This is pretty rare because we don't usually see hurricanes or even tropical storms make it this far to the north with how cold the water temperatures are with the northern currents that come from north to south. Obviously, that is a big factor with all the cold water coming down. However, this is likely going to be very close to making landfall in Hawaii. If not, we could even see a tropical storm make landfall in Hawaii as we go into Tuesday. And eventually by Wednesday and Thursday, it will likely weaken out entirely as the water temperatures will just be too cold for it to maintain any intensity. But this is definitely something we'll continue to track on this channel over the next few days. Make sure you subscribe down below and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates on this. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next forecast will likely be on Saturday, and then after Saturday, we are going to have our winter forecast for 2025 likely coming out on Sunday or Monday, so click the bell icon so you're notified when that releases. And I also have a huge announcement that I will be attending the National Weather Association's annual meeting this weekend. I was invited to be a part of a panel that'll be talking more about severe weather communication. You can actually watch this on YouTube. The bottom right of your screen there, it gives you at least the at handle to follow on YouTube to be able to watch it live. Uh, make sure to check it out. I'll be in Huntsville, Alabama this weekend. You might even see me. But other than that, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. Huge shout out to PDS Debt for sponsoring today's video. You can check them out with the top link in the description below. And we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.